by the people, for the people. Golden Temple. Sikhism, which began in India's Punjab region in the 1400s, is the world's fifth largest religion. Sikhism is a monotheistic faith, which is a belief in the existence of one God. As you will see during the course of this episode, Sikhism truly is a distinct religion with its own unique divine scriptures and beliefs. Thanks for joining us here on another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and I'm going to be sharing with you some facts about Sikhism. A lot of you guys have been requesting it ever since we started our religious video series. Valbir Singh has requested it, Jay Sin, Ankar Singh, Harman Brar, as well as a bunch of other people were asking for us to do video on Sikhism. Okay, so you guys can stop yelling in the comments. We finally have the video. Get ready to learn a lot. And before mm. we get into the facts, let me know, guys, if you had to choose, what other religion would you choose to be? And if you're not religious, what religion would you just be? Let me know down below. The religion of Sikhism was founded by Guru <coughs> Nanak, and it's based on his teachings and that of nine other Sikh gurus who followed him. Guru Nanak was born in 1469 in what is now Pakistan. At the age of 30, he mysteriously disappeared for three days. When he reappeared, he began to preach the Sikh faith, and he spent the rest of his life teaching, writing, and traveling around the world to discuss the religion with Muslims and Hindus. Guru Nanak has been called one of the greatest religious innovators of all time. Now, in the Sikh faith, there are 10 gurus, and those include Guru Nanak, which is Sikhism's founder, Guru Angad, Guru Amar Das, Guru Ram Das, Guru Arjan Dev, Guru Hargobind, Guru Har Rai, there's also Guru Har Krishna, there's Guru Tegh Bahadar, and Guru Gobind Singh, the last human guru. Okay, so now let's talk about the Sikh concept of God. The concept of God is different in Sikhism than other religions. It is also known as Ik Ankar, or One Constant. It's found in the Gurmukhi script that God has no gender in Sikhism, although many translations represent God as a male. It is also Akal Perk, beyond time and space, and Nirankar, without form. Now, I'm sure some of you who may not be familiar with the Sikh religion may be wondering what book or books do they use in their religion? The Sikh scripture is a book called the Guru Granth Sahib. The book is a collection of teachings and general guidelines of how Sikhs should live their lives by Guru Nanak as well as the other gurus. The scriptures are written in the Punjab language and are greatly respected by Sikhs all over the world. You will find that when you visit a Gurudara, which is the place where Sikhs worship, the holy book is kept on a raised platform under a canopy. The Sikhs take their shoes off in the presence of the holy book and also never turn their back to it. And at every major Sikh festival, they read the book all the way through, which takes them roughly 48 hours. And another fact relating to their holy book, the 10th Guru, Gobind Singh, as the last Guru of the Sikhs in human form, Guru Gobind Singh appointed the sacred Adi Granth the first book as his successor, so that after him there would be no more human gurus. The Adi Granth was the first edition of the book compiled by the fifth guru, Guru Arjan. This ensured that the book would be treated with the same respect a human guru is treated with. He also created the Khalsa, <coughs> which is a spiritual brotherhood and sisterhood devoted to the purity of thought and action. He gave the Khalsa as a distinct external form to remind them of their commitment. It was also given to help them maintain an elevated state of consciousness. Now, as I was saying earlier, the community of men and women that are initiated into the Sikh faith is known as the Khalsa, the community of the pure. In order to become a Sikh and join the Khalsa, people need to follow the five Ks. The first one is Kesh. You must have uncut hair as a mark of holiness and submission to God's will. 
Then there is Kanga. It's a small wooden comb that goes into the hair as a sign of cleanliness. Kara is a steel bracelet, and that is a reminder that they are connected to God. Following that is Kachera. This is a short cotton underwear more practical for daily life than the traditional dhoti worn in India. And it's believed to be more practical for daily life than the traditional dhoti worn in India. And finally we have the kirpan. This is a sword used for protection. Now this next fact is very interesting and important to the religion of Sikhism. Any building where the Guru Granth Sahib is kept is actually a Sikh place of worship. This could be a separate building or even just a room in somebody's home. It's also called the Gudrawa, the gateway to the Guru. Now, Sikh worship services are usually held on Sundays, and they base them on the writings of the Guru Grand Sahib together with chants and prayers from the Gurus known as Kirtan. The religious services then end in a langar, meaning a shared meal. Now, continuing with the facts, there are actually four doors into a Gurudara, known as the Door of Peace, the Door of Livelihood, the Door of Learning, and the Door of Grace. These doors are a symbol that people from all the four points of the compass are welcome, and that the members of all four castes are equally welcome. There's always a light in the Gurudara to show that the Guru's light is always visible and is accessible to anyone at any time. The purpose of the doors is to symbolize the openness of the Sikhs towards all people and religions. Now this symbol right here is a universal symbol for Sikhism. It's called the Khanda. It's a double-edged sword flanked by two daggers representing worldly and spiritual powers bound by the oneness of God. Now this here is the central Sikh shrine. This is known as the Harmandir Sahib and is located in Amritsar, India. It's also known as the Golden Temple. The fifth Guru, Arjan, designed the Golden Temple and was the person responsible for collecting the teachings of the Gurus into a sacred book, the Granth Sahib. The Sikhs also have five seats of authority known as the Toks, which literally means a throne or a seat of authority. These are the five Gurudaras that have special significance for the Sikh community. The first and most important one is the Akal Tok, which is literally translated to the throne of the timeless God, and that is situated directly across from the Golden Temple. Okay, now coming down to the end of this video, let's talk about some of the greetings in Sikhism. Here's some of the traditional greetings used by Sikhs. Waheguru ji ka Khalsa. Waheguru ji ki Fateh. Which means, the Khalsa belongs to God, victory belongs to God. Another traditional greeting is Sak Sri Akal. And that means, immortal God is truth. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up for my pronunciation, yeah! Most of the world's 25 million Sikhs live in India, but more than half a million of them live in the United States. The first Sikhs came to the U.S. about 100 years ago. They are mostly concentrated on the coasts of the U.S., with a large Sikh population in Queens, New York. There are over 30 million Sikhs worldwide. Sikhs also live in just about every major country around the world. And that concludes this episode on Sikhism. Definitely was not even anything close to the amount of... Uh, Arizona has a pretty large Sikh population. Um, I remember the first time I saw like a white Sikh, I was like, what, what's going on? Um, very, very good. Sikhs are uh, fond. I'm fond of them. Uh, I have nothing but good memories of Sikhs. Uh, the Sikhs I worked with, the Jaspir, um, Saminder, uh, all those guys that I was telling you about before in, in previous videos. Good, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Thank you for watching our videos. Will you please subscribe to our channel? And will you please give this video a thumbs up? Thank you.